What's up everybody? I don't know where my hat is. Anyway, this video is going to be about the Zero, the electronics. I got them all squared away, the bike rewired. There's a lot of details in here. Leave a comment down below, let me know what you think. And I gotta go back actually and uh, follow up on the comments from last videos. I don't know why, but I haven't been responding, so sorry about that. But I'll get to it, I promise. And here is the connector. I made up a little wire. Crimped all my connectors on there. <clears throat> now we're gonna start pinning them. I already did a few in there. Okay, after a few modifications, added a relay out here like they originally did. That one right there. Um, and added some color code for my wires and yada yada yada. I think after all of this mess and rewiring that down there and the key and blah 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 and blah blah blah. This looks pretty bad. I think I got it all wired up right there. So got my pins that I'm using in there all color coded nicely. I um, actually rewired the kill switch with a brand new wire down to the bottom. It wasn't long enough, the factory one. And then I got the uh, throttle control wired in here. And then I have a regular um, cable that is really nice. Really, uh, I don't know what kind of coating this is, but it's really durable stuff, which I wanted. Got that all wired. Got it down here going to the keys. Hi. Get off. And uh, got that wired down here to the solenoid. And then got that wired over here to the battery cable. I got the USB connector. Actually comes all the way up here, right there. So USB connector goes to my battery. That's how I'm getting the data and to turn on the BMS. Then there's a relay down here to keep the 12 volt power local. I couldn't really run a big enough wire with enough amperage into this plug through the circuit back out. So they actually originally did this on the bike. This is the original relay that was on the bike using the same method. So I thought that works. And uh, yeah, BMS here. There's the DC-DC converter sitting up here. So I'll get this wire cleaned up and double check, triple check, everything is correct. Uh, probably throw some heat shrink on some of these connectors once I know that they're correct, just to keep them all nice and happy. Then we'll bunch all this crap up, probably in this little pocket where you can't see it. Tuck all these wires nicely and then there's some uh, plastic parts that go on the front that'll cover up all this. So I'll do that after I get the circuit built. So I took off the charge resistor, it's now part of the circuit, got my little connector made up, and got my stuff on here, and uh, yeah, so this connector right here actually plugs on to this connector right here, ta-da, so then I can build my whole circuit with all the relays, all the stuff onto this board, and then take my schematic drawing, which I'm doing a wire at a time, and a component at a time. As you can see, there's just kind of stuff scattered everywhere on this screen. And then I'll have enough to do um, what I need to make a regular circuit board. So, one step at a time, but first I thought I'd do this and finish the bike wirings and test it all and then make sure it's gonna do what I want because what's actually gonna happen is when you turn the key on, it will interlock the 12 volt DC power on so when you turn the key off, it actually pushes the power down button on the beagle bone through a short to ground, through a relay, uh, this one right here to be precise. So it's shorting it to ground, this one's interlocking the power on, keeping that on so when you turn the key off it will boot down the beagle bone and the beagle bone will shut off the rest of the system through the interlock. Pretty sweet! It's actually really simple. Um, I don't know where my hair's... Here's the way I like to draw things when I do stuff that seems confusing. Just draw it up in a uh, simple form here, right? So basically, I've got 3.3 volt, which the beagle bone turns on C2, right? In order to turn on C2, you power up the beagle bone. So you turn the key on, turns on C1, right? C1 um, goes to the power pin as it normally closed. 
and an open pin going to the DC-DC converter, which turns on the 3.3. Then when you turn the key off, it turns C1 off, but because you had 3.3 on, it turns C2 on, which interlocked the power on, and then the beagle bone will shut off, which will then disconnect C2, C2 will disconnect the power, and the cycle starts over. This is a basic push button interlock for a start stop circuit. That's all this is. The only difference is that I'm using the Beagle Bones power to turn on and off relays and then interlocking everything on. So the BMS will turn on with the key and when you turn the key off it will power down the Beagle Bone safely and then it will power down the rest of the system and you're good to go for power off. Hope that made sense. Sorry, my brain just works a thousand miles an hour sometimes and I forget people can't catch up. Did you understand any of that? Kindle doesn't work. He wants to take this old Kindle apart and I'm just just waiting. So did you understand anything I said? I don't know what to do. Yeah, let, let, let's let everybody leave a comment. If you followed along with what I just said about the interlock and how the power up, power down works, let me know in the comments. If it went right over your head and you'd like to know more, I will go into more detail on the next video and really explain it to you. How were the fireworks? I did not like them. But yet you did like them? Yes. You like them but you don't like them? Yes. They freak me out. So you do like them? I like the pretty cars and not the ginormous boots. Oh, my favorite part. I hate them. <laughs> I do not like them. <laughs> It's the day after the 4th of July. We're all tired because the big fireworks all over the city. Anyway, I have managed to finish the software to at least turn on the extra relays that I need to turn on the power to do everything else. I've got it hooked up here. It looks a little bit crazy. There are relays on the bottom. I'll show you later whenever I get rid of all these wirings. I've got it hooked up to the power supply. I've tested all the low voltage, 12 voltage, 5, 3.3, etc. Looks like we're good to go. Now, I guess it's time to plug it in here and hope I wired everything else correctly. That would be that would be good. Here's all my old wiring that I took off. Good wiring that I hooked up temporarily put on. Now I'm yeah, you know. Whatever, right? It'll work. It'll be fine. It'll only be a small explosion if it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so, I am going to power this down and uh, go from there. So, we are connected. If I just disconnect this, boop, it will self-power down through my interlock circuits. There, it powered off. And now uh, we can hook it up over there and see what happens. Oh yeah, and I uh, I literally have not cleaned the bench at all since last week, so it just keeps getting worse. This is okay, right? Oh my, you can't be yawning. Go back to bed. See you. Bye bye. All right. Well, I hooked it up to the bike. I found a few. Uh, actually, just one. Well, actually, I found I found two issues. One was on my ground pin on my BMS got pushed out. It wasn't in all the way in my connector, so it didn't turn on. Fix that. The second problem is is that my interlock for my key works great, except for the pre-charge resistor for the BMS keeps the 12 volt power on. So I'll explain that to you real quick, and then I'll figure out a solution and tell you how I fixed it. So there's a pre-charge resistor right here. So when you turn the key on, power turns on to the pre-charge resistor, and the pre-charge resistor actually powers on the motor controller but it does it through a resistor not through the high power contactor and what that does is there's capacitors and circuitry in here that needs a pre-charge which a lot of the older uh, motor controllers like this need you pre-charge it slowly through a resistor so this is a 300 ohm resistor that's what this guy is right here pre-charge it and then after that you can turn it on with the power solenoid and it won't ruin any of the electronics. Well, because of where I have my pre-charge resistor and how my interlock is set up, it's actually not allowing the circuit to power fully off in the time needed. 
so it's a bit weird, but whenever the power comes on here in the beagle bone, it powers up a relay which then interlocks my power on. Well, when I turn my key on and my key back off, it works great except the precharge resistor doesn't have enough time to discharge the system and it actually keeps it on. The beagle bone will restart after about 10 seconds. And uh, so I'm going to figure out how to disable that completely so that the power down circuitry all works great. We'll figure that out. I'll show you how I do that. But that's what that's the only issue. Otherwise, my entire circuit layout and what I drew up and what I put on this board functions as I thought it would. Which is a great thing to know that my brain still works fairly well with this complexity even. Here's the back. I told you I'd show you. There's just a couple of relays here. But yeah. So uh, let me work out that one detail and then uh, <laughs> I'll be darned. Things should actually function the way I wish. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> Alright, after some some thinking, uh, I realized what the problem was. I had a clue of what I thought the problem was. And it is the fact that my motor controller is being charged up and it has some capacitors in it. Well, when you turn the power off, the capacitors that are in here will feed backwards back through my circuit back to the 12 volt converter and then keep things alive longer than I would wish them to so my interlock backfires okay simple solution put a diode right between basically the output going to the motor controller so now the motor controller will self discharge and not feed back through my circuit powering my stuff so I simply added a diode um, right there it's a shocky diode can't even really see it standing up there but that's a shocky diode rated for 400 volts which is overkill at 3 amps it's actually just something I found on a circuit board that I had laying around so I snatched it off there and I think we're good to go in fact the only chip that I bought on this entire project was the op amp because that was a hard one to find. It's buried under all the wires. Other than that, this stuff was recycled. Of course, the Beagle Bone. Um, the iPhone wasn't just an old one we had from somebody. So, I'm going to show you how this thing works. When I turn the key on, I'm going to get voltage. All right, the voltage is going to be pre-charging. I'm actually measuring voltage. All right, I'm measuring voltage at the um, here on the solenoid, so I'm measuring voltage uh, basically here. Okay, I'm actually measuring it right here at this point, but I'm measuring it at the motor controller and then ground, which is the battery ground. So when I turn this on, you'll see that there's a nice slow pre-charge. Let me put you on the tripod so it's easier for me to do this. All right, so. The way that the interlock works is you turn the key on, it self locks the system on. When I turn the key off, it basically presses and I had to wire directly into the push button for the power. Okay, as I explained previously. So if you watch, when I turn it on, it'll slowly charge that up. Then once the final solenoid kicks on and the relays kick on, it will give it full potential and bypass that charge resistor. So here we go. So we're charging up. See the beagle bone has powered up. Now the battery is actually sitting at around 52 volts, but this won't really reach a 52 volts because we have a drop across this diode and a little bit of a drop across our 300 ohm resistor. So this takes just a second to boot up. Then you hear the other relays click on. I got the AC on in here, so it might be kind of noisy, but I'll be quiet so you can hear it. That will also connect and there it went click click now we're at 52 volts and our BMS is on and everything's on so now that's how long it took to boot I plan on disabling a bunch of functions on the beagle bone so it boots roughly one to two seconds right now it's like 15 which is a bit longer than I'd like but it works and then when I turn the key off, it's actually pressing the power button with a relay and then we'll self-power down, the interlock will turn off, and everything else will turn off. So, 
key off. BeagleBone is powering down. There it powered itself off, so now we have the uh, battery BMS is off, and now a pre-charge isn't backfeeding, and our uh, motor controller is self-discharging, so that's actually what's happening here. If I turn the key back on, everything comes back alive and the system starts up as normal, so prototype board works, very happy. Alright, so I'm going to do that one more time just to show you how the system works, so key on. Turned on the BMS, started the pre-charging, that's all working, the beagle bone is booting up. If you watch the little green indicator on my screen, when the um, BMS gets communication through the beagle bone, it will turn on. You'll hear the big contactor and the relays turn on. So there's a key and the big contactor um, there's a key wire going to the motor controller they turn on di at different times as well in sequence so power on key on I don't know if you just heard that boom boom exactly when I talked green lights on got our voltage going correctly now I can turn off on my handle I don't think you guys can see my handle but on my handle Yowzers. My. Uh, it's a little tight. There we go. On my handle, I've got my. Okay. Kill switch. Right? So the kill switch basically turns off the contactor. And as you can see, when I turned it off, now it's back to the pre charge resistor. So if I turn it back on, now we're back on to the norm. So if I throttle it while holding the brake, see it's trying to move. You can watch the amperage here and you can probably see the voltage drop if I'm out of the way far enough. See the voltage drop as I'm just holding the brake. 29 amps out. So it looks like the system's working. Then when I get to where I'm going, I want to park it. I can take the key out and the whole system will boot down all by itself. And when the beagle bone is booted down, the system shuts off. So I'm very happy with that. Now I do have everything in schematic form now. I'll get you a close up of that just so you have it for reference. So there is my, um, get my camera set up here. So there's my full schematic on the circuit board. And there's my full schematic on the bike itself. And yeah. Good to go. That was a lot of work. I'm very glad though that I built it here on this board instead of elsewhere first just to save some time. Dad, what? This is the spot at our booting. Oh my goodness. I'm going to have to go in there and take care of that, okay? I'll be right there. Hilarious. I guess I'll have to take care of that. Beer back. Alright, I want to give you a real quick close-up of this crazy circuit. So I just used some opto isolators, which then drive some MOSFETs, which then drives the relays that are on the back side of this board. But yeah, if you look right there, there are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine resistors in that pile of mess right there. Um, three opto isolators, three, tra uh, three MOSFETs, those are just in-channel MOSFETs. So the opto isolators weren't enough current to drive my relays. And uh, then I got safety diodes, they called them flyback diodes, across my uh, coils. So I don't have any crazy stuff going back into my circuitry. Then you got your uh, IC there doing the uh, RS-232 conversion. Then you got your op amp there which is driving the motor controller, the beagle bone. Charge pre-charge resistor. And that's basically the whole thing. It's not complicated, but I didn't want to make a printed circuit board and then something not work correctly. So now that I got it documented, I know it works. I'll drive around with this on here like this for a little while. Then we got the uh, uh oh, then we got the rest of the uh, the rest of the system connected up, wired up to a single wire. Got all the other crap back here and. Uh, 
That's it. Oh my goodness. Well, that's the end of this video. The next thing to do is take these schematics and actually put a printed circuit board together, which means I gotta have the right pads, placements, dimensions, etc. And then design the bottom of my box, right? I have the, the iPhone top that goes on the box. Now I need to finish the box and how everything fits together. So one step at a time, my friends. Read the Bible more, rock on. God bless you guys. Have a good day and stay safe. We'll see you later. Bye. Oh, I gotta go clean this place up. It's a disaster.